Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. This video comes to you from a 1,000 acre winter wheat field in western Kentucky. It's harvest time, and in this video, I would like to take you on a ride with the grain cart operator that is keeping all the combines rolling out in this field. There are seven big machines harvesting the crop. There are model John Deere S790 combines, class 9 machines with 400 bushel tanks, 543 horsepower engines, and 28 and a half foot unloading augers. These machines are harvesting a thousand acres a day, and it takes a good grain cart operator to keep all this equipment moving back and forth across the field harvesting, and the trucks rolling on the road back to the farm full of wheat. As these big combines are crossing the field, they're taking in a 45 foot swath of winter wheat with McDon FD145 draper heads. It's a grain cart operator's job to make sure that these combines are rolling nonstop through the harvest. When the combine's grain bin is full, it can unload 3.8 bushels of wheat per second. There are four John Deere 9420R articulated four-wheel drive tractors and Kinsey 1105 grain carts that hold 1,100 bushels of grain working out in this field. For efficiency, the farm splits up the combines and tractors to work on different sections of the field. We're going to take a look at where four of the combines are working together and we're going to ride along inside one of the tractors and talk to the operator about what it's like to run with all this big equipment and how the harvest works. I'm up in the cab of a John Deere 9420R. We're in the middle of the wheat harvest here. And it's always a lot of activity. We've got four S790 John Deere Class 9 combines out here with 45 foot heads and carts are keeping all these big machines going, getting the crop in the bin and headed back to the farm. You can see uh, this S790 in front of us is running a 45 foot wide McDonald FT145 head and he's got a very full 400 bushel bin there pouring out. I'm up in the cab here with Gil. He's running this uh, 9420R. He's keeping up with combines on this side and the other 9420R is keeping these combine's going. It's definitely a skill set. We're going to talk with Gil about what it's like to run these cart tractors and keep these combines going because the grain cart is one of the most important parts of the harvest. Make sure these machines are running non-stop. Uh, I kind of like it when we split up like this and hit different bars because uh, you know, like right now, Otis, he just got full and I was able to go fill the truck up and wait until he got full and he knew that he could go and grab any combine that he wanted to hey, and get uh, a load off of, so. Uh, and now it's kind of, it's my turn, so I'm gonna go and grab all these until I'm full and we'll just keep on going like that. So, I know that's a, a big question people always have is how do you coordinate all this? You know, you got seven combines going, or how many are out here right now? Well, there's four here on this farm right now, and then two, two of us buggies. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, uh, implied communication now, though, because, you know, we're, we're so used to working with each other. But um, at first, you know, obviously we have, we have comms with each other. We can talk to each other on the radio. Um, but uh, after a while, we kind of just go with the flow. We, we know what each other are going to do. So do those lights, like up here, we can see this one's pretty full. Does that help let you know who's the fullest or where you need to get to first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then also, you know, seeing that grain pop up over the top there. Um, you know, these combines can hold a whole lot, but uh, <clears throat> once those orange lights start flashing, you know, you just, you know, they take priority. So I'll head to this guy first. Once he gets on this uh, inner over here, and I'll get his load. But, uh, yeah, we just kind of, it's a, it's a cycle, you know, you just try to keep them going. The, the main thing is just, just don't let them stop. Yeah, when you're trying to get 
a thousand acres done a day. That's you got an important job to keep it, keep those guys moving. Oh yeah, and, you know it's. I mean, everyone wants to be in the combine. It's a great time. And everything, but we can see had some sprayer runs this year. It's been oh, bad. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. Um, but you know, if you don't have good card operators, um, then those combines, you know, are pointless. So um, that's that's the biggest reason we're so efficient. I mean, numbers is one thing, but if we don't have the cards, I mean, in the truck, then, then we can't move this grain, so. Um, takes everybody. This is Matt here. All right. He's number one this year. So he's been number four. Yeah. You see this uh, 28 and a half foot unloading auger dumping out 3.8 bushels a week per second. So is it pretty easy coming up to a 45 foot head like this and you got the auger there or is it a little tricky at times? Um, it, if you're not used to it, it it's tricky but um, now it's, it's, you know, I don't think about it now. I just kind of know where I need to be. It's, um, it's kind of muscle memory now but um, at first, like, and especially with the tracks too, I mean, the tracks and the auger sticking out there, and when, you know, you've got a curvy uh, row like this, you know, he's, he's kind of cutting it at a, at a weird angle. He's not making it easy on but... Um, yeah, I guess that, that's definitely something to think about, because you don't want a, one little nudge and you right. could be up into the head there. Yeah. And just paying attention, you know, just not getting complacent. And, Gotta keep your head off. So we got 1,100 bushel carp back there. You can heat a little over 1,200 bushels on it. Yep. Um, and that's my, my scale here. It, the, the biggest load that I got yesterday was like 74,000 pounds, I think. Okay. Um, and that was about uh, it was a full uh, full truck and then and then some. So I was able to do almost a, a truck and a half. So this is, is this the first load on the cart here? It is. Eighteen thousand. Yes. And it could have been more, but uh, it looked like he could. He was almost full. Yeah. So it looks like these combines have pretty good straw management. That's a lot of straw pouring out of there. Forty-five feet worth. Uh, I don't know. A couple of them. Uh, haven't been doing as well. I've been seeing when I've been loading the trucks. I've been seeing a lot of like straw residue. Uh, but you know, you know, these are brand new combines. They do, they do great. Um, it's a good shot for you. doesn't have his lights on or anything, but uh, he's got some grain in his tank, so you just try to keep him moving. Um, I'll just kind of cycle through everybody until I'm full. So you can take three full combines yes, on here? If they're completely full, yeah. We've got 400 bushel S790 combines. These are 543 horsepower machines. And you know, this is thick wheat, so typically we're looking at 90 to 100 bushel wheat. Uh, that's a lot of material to put through, a lot of grain to need that horsepower. And then when you're pouring this grain out on the go, that's definitely important to have that power with it. But they can fill up fast, so it's good to as you get those bottlenecks sometimes if you run out of trucks. or. Oh, 
this is empties coming back and yeah. now we've got 31,000 pounds here on the scale. Yeah. So what kind of hours are you putting in each day? Uh, right now, uh, starting, of course I get to the shop around 7 and start cutting around 9.30 and quit at about 10, 10.30, so I mean, I'm getting probably 16 hours in at least, but it just, it kind of just depends. Uh, you know, that, that week starts getting tough and wet around dark and sometimes we just push it to the limit and see how much we can get. But, uh, uh, one of the reasons you guys are pushing it each day is because all this ground is going to be planted into soybeans. Right. So the wheat's got to yeah. come off as quick as possible. And yeah. Cedars are right on our tail, so we, uh, we just try to keep moving and cover as much ground as we can. Tatum up there? Yeah. Yep. Got to ride with Tatum. He's planting beans on the 4840 last year. Okay. So here we can see combine number five. Each combine is numbered. You guys typically cut the fields the same way every season. Just come in and so yeah, there's, work a, the there's same a direction. system to it, and uh, you know a lot, of, a lot of these guys know it, and they kind of just fall in. There's no real uh, verbal communication anymore with it. They just fall in and start start knocking it out. So, uh, like I said before, it's a lot of implicit communication here. You know, you get somebody hop in and, and run, but. Uh, a lot of times they don't know what's going on. And, and that's how I was last year. You know, I, didn't, I didn't know what in the world was going on. I, knew was, I couldn't let these combines stop running. So, uh, But you catch on pretty quick. I mean, you spend enough time out here, you're going you're gonna to catch on. So you like the 9R? I love it. It's great. Now we're up to 43,000 pounds. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to get me full or not. I think he's going to go knock out his strip there. So is there one season that you like grain carting better, or are they all about the same? Or? Uh, you know, that's kind of debatable. Um, wheat is, is fine because there's so much going on, but it can also be very hectic and, and get crazy. Um, a lot of radio traffic and everything, but, um, and a lot of, believe it or not, there's sometimes like fighting over, over you know, what, who's, you know, what cart's going to get what combine or whatever, a lot of traffic. Um, during beans, uh, me and this guy Angel, uh, we ran carts last year, and it it was way better because it was just the two of us, and uh, 
the you know, two we keeping up with five combines five combines, versus four right. keeping up with the seven right now. Right, and, but it was so much easier, you know, this, it was such a good, like, systematic plan that we had. It, you know, it worked out good where we could kind of split up and not have to worry about somebody swooping in and messing things up for you. So. And now we got a 53,000 pounds. And yeah, I know I've seen you guys sometimes, like especially in corn when all the trucks are gone and oh, man. you got four carts full and one shows up, it's like you're going to cannibalize it who gets there first. Right, yeah. Well, it's all about getting the trucks out of the field and back to the shop. And uh, so whoever can get loaded first, that that's, you know, it's about getting, getting the load back to the truck so he can leave. And the sooner he goes, the sooner he can get back. So um, when you spread load it, uh, sometimes everyone will get full at once. And so you wanna you wanna minimize that. You don't want that to happen. That's why Otis and I are doing what we're doing. So after I get full here, I'll load a truck and then he'll put on the burrito. You filled up. So you're running about eight miles, nine miles per hour when you're loaded up like this, and maybe uh, eleven if you're trying to catch somebody. <laughs> you know that that varies. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm I vary from eight miles an hour all the way to fifteen. So it just depends on how flat it is, how, how bad the ruts are, all that, how heavy I am. It's definitely rutted up this year. It's bad this time. Well, I know sometimes when you guys get moving, you can see the straw like airstream over the hood. And, oh yeah. Oh so. yeah. That was happening yesterday. So now we're just waiting for them to finish up this corner so you can get topped off. And yeah, he's mask going to knock it out and <clears throat> top me off here and then I'll go load the truck. So I guess it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Oh yeah, yeah. When it's, when it's time to go, you got to go and then Times you would be sitting around waiting for a half hour. Now, when I'm filming on the ground, it's always my guess like, where are they going to dump on the go and to get that shot? So now Matt's getting ready to head to a new section and just top you off here. We can actually watch the Kinsey scale here to just start um, as Matt's pouring out there. You can see it jumping up by the bushel. Seventy thousand, sixty-nine thousand. Just trying to decide. Yeah. So the nice thing about these Kinsey eleven oh fives is that you can drive right up here and fill this truck, and he's on his way back to the bins. Right. Some of those bigger thirteen and fifteen hour bushel carts are good to move a lot of stuff, but then you got a half loaded truck sitting and waiting. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, every time you come up here, it's a, it's a truck. Logger coming up here. So does it take a little bit of getting used to you to get up right next to one of these and fill it, or? Yeah, it takes some getting used to, for sure. It's all about, you know, good timing. Uh, having a feel for this thing. So just switch that? And yeah, and I've got... Throw on the PTO? Oh, now what does this do here? So this, this is this controls the auger. Okay. So I'm gonna turn the PTO on and then open the door. I can open it all the way to six there. Let it flow. 
usually do about anywhere from 14 to 15. So here we can see the RPM on So when you really open this up, this can pour out about 750 bushels per minute. Something like that. I mean, it, it gets it done quick. You gotta be careful though, it's easy to spill. It's always interesting. It seems like the first half fills up really fast and then the second half it kind of pours in there and all of a sudden it's done. Yeah. Finally made the second hop in there and now you get a little break. Also have this indicator here, that red arrow. What does that just tell you how full and what's the arrow with the yeah. numbers up there? That's opening the, the gate. The gate, the door. Okay. Um, so you can kind of manage like how much you put out um, while you're loading the truck. So sometimes I'll run it right in the middle around four or something. And, uh, it just depends on how much is on the truck and how big a hurry I'm in. So now it's time for Otis to take over. That's right. Well, I appreciate the ride. It's always neat to see how all this stuff works together. Yeah. I hope that you've enjoyed spending some time out in this winter wheat field during the harvest with the John Deere 9420R articulated four-wheel drive tractor and the Kinsey 1105 grain cart. It's interesting to see how everything coordinates during the harvest and seeing the important role this tractor and grain cart play in keeping the crops flowing from the field. I'd like to hear about your farming operation. Do you use a certain tractor and grain cart during your harvest? Let me know about it in the comments section below. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube, where there's over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. As always, thank you for watching.